Praise the Lord, everyone. We're glad that you're here and you've joined us for our service today. We hope that this service will be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. Our Bible studies, uh, we're continuing. Uh, we just finished 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and so this week we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, if you've never joined us for Bible study before, all you need is a King James Bible. You can study along with us verse by verse. Um, we've studied chapter 1 for a couple of weeks, uh, a month actually, the month of uh, March. We studied chapter 1, and, and now we're into April, and so we're going to start uh, studying chapter 2. And so if you've never joined us before, you can get caught up pretty quickly. So we really hope that you will join us as we study the Word of God verse by verse. And so we're going to get into worshiping the Lord. This afternoon we're going to sing a hymn that is one of our favorites here, and it's called At Calvary. And one of the reasons why this is my favorite hymn, probably, is because it so wonderfully illustrates the story of salvation, the process of salvation. Years I spent in vanity and pride, says the first verse. That's before we got saved. And then by God's word, at last my sin I learned, is the second verse. And now I've given to Jesus everything, is the third verse. And then the last verse, it talks about the wonderful plan in place for salvation. So let's sing this hymn together and let's worship the Lord as we do it. And let's really think and concentrate about how wonderful salvation is. You know, the Bible calls it, and Paul calls it, the free gift. And this gift is free. It's not something that can be purchased. It's not something that can be bought or, or traded for. All it is is a trusting of the gospel. And so let's think about that and consider how wonderful that is as we sing and worship the Lord this afternoon. Years I spent in vanity and pride Caring not my Lord was crucified Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Well, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurn. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Well, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Well, now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Well, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Well, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Well, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. 
There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Let's sing that last verse again. <clears throat> oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Well, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Well, had it not been for the old rugged cross. Oh, had it not been for a man called Jesus. Well, then forever my soul would be lost. Well, had it not been or a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old rugged cross, oh, had it not been for a man called Jesus, well, then forever my soul would be lost. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing one more chorus. And that's, He paid a debt he did not owe. Well, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Well, he paid a debt he did not owe, I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad he came and paid that debt because there's not something that I could ever pay. You know, the wages of sin, the wages of sin is death. And all of sin that comes short of the glory of God and so really, if we're depending on ourselves to pay that debt, it's never going to get paid. We're never going to live. We're going to die in our sin. But I'm so thankful that Christ took upon himself our sin so that we might be the righteousness of God through him. Praise the Lord. So we're going to pray this afternoon and we're going to pray that God is going to be in this service and... and um, I believe that God is going to do a work today. I have a very important message that I'm going to preach in a few moments. And I'm hoping it will be a blessing to you and, and will help you a little bit. And so I just want to pray that the message will come through. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful once again for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to be able to gather together wherever we are 
to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we know that wherever we are and wherever we we happen to be, wherever that place is, we know, Lord, that we can be in your presence. The church is not a building. The church is not a place. But the church is, is us as believers. The church is the body of Christ. And so wherever that body is, wherever a part of that body is, that is where the church is. And we are so thankful, God, that you are so faithful to us, Lord. And, and all of the things and all of the, the beauty that we see around us, Lord, the creation, the creation points, Lord, to you. Let us not look at these things in vain, but let us see your glory in everything that is around us, Lord. I want to pray, God, that you will be in this service, that this message, Lord, that I am about to preach will go out far and wide. And I pray, Lord, that people will hear it, people will be challenged by it, Lord, and, and that it will change and transform lives by your power. We pray, God, that, that you'll just be with us, Lord, and anoint my words today. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So I have a very, very simple message for you today. We're going to look at a few passages of Scripture. We're going to talk about building on the rock. We're going to talk about building on the rock. We're going to talk about foundations today. We're going to talk about construction Today we're going to talk about building buildings and building things and what that must be built upon. You know, when I was in, in high school and I just got out of high school and I graduated, one of my first jobs was working at a construction site. And I spent a couple of weeks there and it was a temp job. Uh, didn't pay very well. It was a hot, sweaty job. It was a heavy, um, physically demanding job. It wasn't great, but... But um, I learned a lot in doing that job. What we were doing is, is I was working construction. And we were building uh, what was eventually going to be a nursing home or a long-term care home. And I was there when the foundation was being laid. And the people, the men that were working, the, the, the cement people and the... the the foundation people, they came in and they had these giant plywood planks and they had a frame built. And then they brought in cement mixer after cement mixer after cement mixer, pouring concrete into those forms. Because this would be a big building. It was going to be probably, I, I don't know, it was probably eighty to 100,000 square feet. And so the foundations had to be big. They had to be able to be strong enough to hold up that building. And the footings, when they were pouring the footings, the footings were probably, I don't know, 24 inches wide, probably two feet wide, and, and probably eight inches tall. So they were, they were big footings, and then they poured the foundation walls on top of that. And I remember I was there when all of that stuff was being done. And I realized, in thinking back on that job, how that illustrates... And how I could use that illustration to present the thought in my preaching today about building. You see, if your foundation is not strong, if your foundation is not built upon the rock, your structure is, is, is not going to be strong, it's not going to stand the test of time, it's not going to be sturdy. If there's going to be a, a wind or an earthquake or anything, that building is going to collapse and come down. We don't want that today. We want to be able to stand fast and be firm and withstand whatever things come at us. So our opening passage of scripture today is going to be in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 16. And I want to read verses 18 and 19. This should give us a little bit of a foundation today. This should, this should help us in understanding about the church and what the foundation of the church is built on. You see, a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what this foundation is. But I'm going to preach today about what that foundation must be on. If we want to be able to withstand whatever's going to come against us, we need to be built on this one foundation. So Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19 says this, and this is Jesus speaking. 
And he says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Ah, uh, flip too many pages. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 20. They charged he, his disciples, and they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And so let's go back to verse 18. So this is Jesus speaking. And who is he talking to? He's talking to the apostle Peter. And he said, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We hear this quoted a lot, don't we? I've heard a lot of Roman Catholics quote this verse a lot. But they misinterpret it. They twisted it into something. And they could say something that is not saying. It, because they're not built on the right foundation. They say this, this, that this verse is saying... Christ is telling Peter that he's going to build the church on him. And therefore, Peter must be the first pope. Well, I'm sorry, but that interpretation comes from a misinterpretation. Christ here was not saying he's going to build the church upon Peter. Christ here is saying he's going to build his church on the rock, and that rock is, is himself. Let me tell you something. The foundation of the church must be Jesus Christ. The foundation of the church is not Peter. Because if you look down a few verses, Jesus calls Peter Satan. It wasn't saying he's actually the devil. But in verse 23, And then he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Well, what kind of a first pope would Peter be if Jesus turned to him and said, You're Satan. How dare Jesus disrespect the Pope like that? You see, the Catholics get a lot of things wrong. The Catholic Church is built on a wrong, faulty foundation. And that's why, over the years, there's been earthquakes and there's been things that have happened that are crumbling that church from within. The sexual abuse scandals. All of these types of things that are happening. And the fact that the Roman Catholic Church is just hemorrhaging members like there's no tomorrow. And the residential schools here in Canada and all kinds of things. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition, the Crusades. There's a lot of blood on the, on the Catholic's hands. There's a lot of blood in the hands of Catholics. There's been a lot of people martyred because they stood against the Catholic Church. There's a lot of people that mistake Catholicism for Christianity, and I'm going to tell you, do not look at the two as the same. They're not. Catholics are no more Christian than Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons are. They just believe there's power in numbers. You see, the Catholic Church is built on a faulty foundation. You see, in verse 18, Jesus is not saying, you're Peter and I'm going to build my rock on you. What Jesus is saying, you're Peter, but I'm going to build the church on myself. I'm going to be the church. I'm going to be the foundation. I'm going to be the footings. I'm going to be the concrete that's going to hold this building up, this church up. I'm going to be that. It's not going to be you, Peter. It's not going to be you. There are some people that also falsely believe that the church started with Paul. Now I believe that Paul is our apostle today. I believe that the doctrines that we believe and hold dear today should come from Paul. I absolutely believe that. But I realize that Paul was not the, the foundation of the church. Paul was not the beginning of the church. The church didn't start with Paul. Paul was a persecutor of the Christian church before he got saved. Well, how could he be persecuting the Christian church if the Christian church didn't exist until after he got saved? It doesn't make any sense. And so the foundation has to be upon Jesus. And Jesus didn't build his church upon somebody else. 
Jesus built his church upon himself. And the gates of hell. It doesn't matter what this church is going to face. It doesn't matter what scandals. It doesn't matter what oppression. It doesn't matter uh, what persecution it's going to face. It's going to stand firm in Christ. Because he is our foundation. Praise the Lord. If you're going to build on anything other than Jesus Christ, it will not stand. The Catholics did it. And their church and kingdom is crumbling, isn't it? There's not a lot of good things out there about Catholicism. There's actually a whole website out there dedicated to listing names of priests that have been accused of sexual abuse. Happens a lot. Happens all the time in Catholicism. There's a lot of blood on, on Catholics' hands, as I've talked about a few moments ago. So don't confuse Catholicism with Christianity. It's not the same. It's not the same at all. So the Catholics believe that Peter is the foundation of the church, but he's not. The rock is Christ. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to go backward a little bit. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at, at another verse here. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. Matthew 7, verse 24. <clears throat> We're going to read to the end of the chapter. Matthew 7, verse 24. It says, Therefore, whatsoever, or whosoever, heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth not them, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. So Jesus has a lot of wise things here to say. He's saying, build your house upon the rock. If you build your house on the rock, you are wise. If you build it upon me, here's Jesus saying, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, whosoever doeth them, whosoever builds upon me and upon my foundation and builds their house upon my rock, the rain and the storms and the winds and the earthquakes will not shake that foundation. Will not shake it. Would you like to be unshakable today? Would you like to be able to withstand anything? Build your house on the rock. Build on the rock. Now Jesus also talked about the opposite. He said, every one of mine that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, everyone that rejects me, everybody that rejects my gospel, everybody that rejects me as being king of kings and lord of lords and me being the savior is foolish. And what, is the, what does a foolish man do? He builds his house upon sand. You ever notice, you ever watch somebody build a house? Maybe somebody watching today is a builder or an architect or, or an engineer or, or something. And, and maybe you can testify that, yes, this is true. If you're going to build a building, you're going to build a structure, you better make sure that it's put upon a foundation. And you better make sure that, that those footings that you're going to pour out of concrete with rebar and everything else is going to be strong enough to be able to withstand uh, lateral forces. When I was a kid... Back when I was a teenager, 20, in my 20s, I always wanted to be an architect. And I would draw buildings out and hypothetical buildings and things that I wanted to build and never did. Um, never went to school to be an architect or anything like that. 
but I always uh, had an interest in, in architecture and I like to design things. And, and if I had a house, this is what I'd want it to look like and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I realized whenever I look at blueprints and I have a blueprint collection, whenever I look at blueprints, it's interesting to look at the, the structural plans. You know, I've seen big buildings go up and I've seen big buildings come down. And in fact, last summer, there was a building here in my city, it was a hospital, it was a five story building and it was being torn down. And I went down there and I actually watched them do it because I was fascinated by it. And as they started breaking apart the brick and, and pulling the brick out, you could see exposed behind it was, was steel I-beams. There were columns that came up and beams that went across and the whole thing was like a frame. And then when they finally got the building gone, they got down into the, into the foundation. And the foundation was, oh, it must have been, the walls must have been two feet thick. Well, if you're going to build a five-story hospital on a building uh, on top of a foundation, you better make sure that that foundation is, is strong and built on a rock. Now, thankfully, here in the city that I live in, we have a lot of bedrock. And so you, you only have to dig down about five, ten feet, and you've got rock. And you can, when you build a building and you pour a foundation on bedrock, you can be sure that that building's going to be solid. But you could build in other areas where it's just sandy clay. And if you're building on sandy clay, you can't just build a foundation. You have to drill holes in the ground and, and put big long pilings into the ground and drill them in sometimes 50 feet long. Because you need to be built on a rock. And if not, you need to make sure that your foundation is strong enough. Well, if you build on Jesus Christ, your foundation is going to be strong enough. If you build on sand, or you build on mush, or you build on clay, you're going to have no solid foundation there. And so whenever wind comes and the earth moves and, and the soil conditions change, you're going to start noticing cracks in your walls and, and maybe uh, cracks in your ceilings and, and things are going to start falling uh, out of level and, and all kinds of things are going to happen. You're going to have structural problems. And then eventually if you don't address them and you don't underpin your foundation or whatever it is you have to do to strengthen it, it's just going to collapse. It's going to collapse. I don't want to have a building that collapses. I don't want my life to collapse. So what do I need to do? I need to build on that rock. I need to build on that foundation. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Luke now. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verses 46 to 49. Luke, Luke 6 Chapter, Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. It's kind of talking along the, the, the same lines here. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49 talks about the opposite. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the streams did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. If you want your house to fall down, build it without a foundation. Build it without a foundation. Just pour concrete on the grass. Pour a concrete pad on the grass, and then build on top of that. What's going to happen? That building's going to shift. It's going to move, it's going to crack, 
and it's going to crumble, and eventually it's going to cave in and collapse because the foundation is not there. The foundation is not on the rock. The foundation is just laying on the ground. It's superficial. It doesn't go deep. Notice how in verse 48 he says, dig deep. You can't just build a, a shallow foundation. You can't just dig down about that much and say, there's my foundation. You have to get below the frost line. Everything above the frost line can move. Things that are below the frost line are going to stay still. Because that frost line is like the devil. That frost line is like sin. It's going to get in there and it's going to heave the whole house. But if your foundation is deep and your foundation is upon the rock, that frost line and, 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 the, and the freezing and the thawing, it's not going to move anything because you're founded on that strong foundation, on that rock. Praise the Lord. Two more verses I want to look at today and we're going to close. We've looked at what Jesus said in his earthly ministry, but we also must go to Paul. Because we realize that Paul is our apostle today. And so we need to see what he has to say on the matter. And so let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I want to read verses 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Well, if you look at this verse kind of out of context, and you look at this verse kind of by itself, it might look like Paul is saying, hey, build on me. I'm going to lay this foundation. You build this foundation on me. And that's where some Christians get tripped up. They believe that, that Paul is, is the start of the church, that Paul is the, the foundation that we need to build on. But no, we need to keep reading. Let's read verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There it is right there. Paul is saying, you want to build? You want to build a strong house? You want to build a mighty tower? You need to build it upon that rock? And what is that rock? That rock is Jesus Christ. Build on him. Build on that. I'm going to keep reading. Let's read verse 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stuff, a man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So this is talking about What's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ? You know, everything that you do, and we've talked about this before. I've preached about the judgment seat of Christ before. It's been a while, so I think we're due for a refresher. And that's what we're going to do today. But I have preached on this. And when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, this is for the saved people. For people that are saved, they're going to be judged. But their judgment's going to look a lot different than those people that are not saved. The judgment seat of Christ is not the same as the great white throne judgment. The judgment seat of Christ is where Christians get judged. The great white throne judgment is where the lost and the, and the evil and wicked ones are going to be judged. And those two judgments are not going to look the same. What's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ is Jesus is going to take everything that you've ever done, all of your works, everything that you've done, and he's going to throw it in a fire. And out of that fire is going to come... Two types of things. Wood, hay, stubble, which is going to be nothing but ash. What happens if you throw wood, hay, or stubble into a fire? It, it just burns and, and gets, you get like ash. But also by fire, you can get gold, silver, and precious stone. You ever seen gold and, and precious stone and metal being melted down and, and turned into something beautiful? A, a hunk of gold being melted down and turned into a beautiful ring or something like that? So what's going to happen is everything that you've done, you're saved. You're not going to be judged for your sins. Your sins were judged at Calvary if you trust in the gospel. But what you will be judged is for your service. What did you do for Christ? Whatever you did for Christ is going to come out as a reward, a tangible reward. 
and whatever you've done for yourself, for your own glory, for your own benefit, is going to be just burnt up and be smoke and ash. So that's why it's so important to build upon that foundation. You've got that foundation in Jesus Christ. You've got a foundation that the biggest earthquake in the world is not going to shake or rattle you. Anything the devil tries to do to you is not going to, you're, you're not even going to feel it. Whatever the, the world tries to throw at you, whatever persecution comes your way, whatever opposition comes your way, you might be shaken, but you're not going to fall down because your foundation is deep and it's built upon that rock, that firm bedrock, which is Jesus Christ. That's where I want to build. I don't want to just build on the sand and let the tide come in and my house get washed away. I want to build upon the bedrock where that tide can come in, those winds and rain and, and tornadoes and whatever comes along, it doesn't matter because I'm bedded firm in the rock. Oh, that's what I want. One more verse and we're going to close with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians 10. I'll get there eventually. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. But pastor, how do we know that that rock is Jesus Christ? We're a little confused because Peter seemed to say, or, or Jesus seemed to say to Peter, we were going to build upon him. And this is where the Catholics get it wrong. We've talked about this. This is where the Catholics get it wrong. They think Paul, Peter was the first pope. They think that that. Peter was given the keys to the kingdom. That Peter was the foundation. Well, let's see where they're wrong. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. And they all did drink of that, of the same spiritual drink. And they drank of that spiritual rock. There it is, that spiritual rock. That rock that you're going to build on. That rock that you're going to have a building on. That you're going to have a firm foundation in. That rock that followed them. And what that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. Christ, if you want a building that's going to last eternity, don't build it upon yourself. Don't build it upon Peter. Don't build it upon Paul. Don't build it upon anything. Don't build it upon sin. Don't build it upon anything but the rock that is Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. When you build upon that rock, there is nothing in heaven and earth that's going to knock it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A wise man built his house upon the rock. A wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the house on the rock stood firm. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the rock stood firm. Praise the Lord. I remember that little chorus from Sunday school. I'm surprised it stuck with me and I still know it 25, 28 years later. But praise the Lord. Build upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what comes against you. It doesn't matter what opposition you face. If you are built upon that rock of Christ, there's nothing that's going to shatter your foundation. There's nothing that's going to crumble and collapse your building. You're going to be firm. You're going to be there. You're going to be steadfast if you build upon Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this privilege and this opportunity that we have be able to come together to worship you, to sing praises unto you, Lord. We're thankful for the word that you've given us today. We're thankful for that rock that you've given us. We're thankful that you've allowed us to lay our foundation upon you, Lord. And we pray, God, that as we build a foundation upon that bedrock, which is you, that nothing can come against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against this church. I'm so thankful for that, Lord. I'm thankful for that promise, that promise that has stood firm for 2,000 years and will stand firm in the future. Lord, we know that the church age is coming to a close. We know the coming 
Very soon, we don't know how soon, but I believe it's very soon, you're going to return for this church. That church that is built upon you. That church that is not built upon Peter. Like some uh, Christian churches, like, like the Catholic church. But that church that is built firmly upon you as you are the rock. Heavenly Father, I also just want to pray, God, that you'll be with us all through this week as we go back to our jobs, as we go back to our workplaces, as we go back to doing whatever it is we do through the week. I pray, God, that you'll bring to remembrance how firm a foundation we have upon you. And when anything happens that tries to shake and rattle our building, we can stand firm and be firm because we are built upon the rock. Be with us this week as we go about our week, Lord. And I pray, God, that you bring us back for Bible study and you'll bring a blessing again as we study and start studying 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we pray, God, that, that we'll meet again next Sunday and hear from you again. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So Bible study Wednesday night. I try to have the video uploaded by 6 p.m. Usually it's earlier, but the goal is 6 p.m. And I think 90% of the time we're able to reach that goal, depending on if there's internet issues or whatsoever. I think there's only been a couple of times we've been late and, and we do appreciate your patience if for some reason it, it can't be uploaded on time. We appreciate your patience. But uh, So please join us for studying the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's very important. And thank you for those that have been watching and studying along with us. And I hope it's been a blessing to you. You know, if you're learning half as much by participating in this study as I am in teaching it and in preparing for it, it's going to be a wonderful blessing. And so until next time, God bless.